Now, I was driving back from my farm in Maryland this weekend, driving by lots of farm ponds and warm water lakes, and I was seeing a lot of bass fishermen out there. So I'm thinking it's about time I do another bass pattern for the channel. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt. Thanks for stopping by. So on my way back from the farm, I stopped by the post office box to pick up any entries in our fly tying contest, and I had one from Mark Hansen of Illinois. Now, he sent in a beautiful Clouser swimming nymph, but he included two flies that I've never tied before. It's called a Stealth Bomber. Now, this is really a cool pattern. I did a little bit of research on it, learned that it was created by Kent Edmonds from Georgia. I couldn't exactly tell the year, but I'm gathering sometime maybe in the 1990s. Now, this pattern, the Stealth Bomber, it's kind of a mix between a Dahlberg Diver and a Gartside Gurgler. Now, it's neither one of these two flies, but how it's tied, it's got a big foam loop for the back. You strip it fast enough, it's going to dive, and it's going to leave some bubbles. It's uh, tied mostly out of foam, some bucktail, and a little bit of crystal flash, and then some rubber legs. So this thing is definitely a bass popper. But one cool thing about it, it's not going to ride real high up like a, a hackled cork body wheel. It's going to sit pretty low in the water, which should increase your hookup rates. And you don't have to tie it in huge bass sizes of four or a six. I'm tying it in a size 10 today, which will still attract some big bass, but it's not going to scare away all the panfish, all the bluegill and brim. They're still going to attack this thing. Now, this is a really cool pattern. I don't think it was all that hard to tie, but it's not a quick tie. It'll take you a good 10 minutes or so to, to get this one down. So thank you, Mark, for sending this sample. I think this is a great looking pattern. I can't wait to get out in the water using it. I think you're gonna like it too. Let's give this thing a shot. So there you go in the vise. This is one that Mark tied. Now, most of them you'll see out there, or maybe not most, but a lot of them are this bright green color. And this is a beautiful fly that, that Mark tied here. It's just w very well done. I mean, you can tell the the uh, stripes on these legs. I think he put those himself. He definitely put the red on the tips. And the recipes I've seen out there actually call for that. So I think that is a very original, original tied pattern right there. So I'm tying this one also on a size 10. I'm using a curved shank hook. I think it's gonna look better. I had some straight ones, but uh, I'm gonna give it a shot on this curve shank. I think it'll look fine. And I'm gonna try tie this one in a black, maybe black and red. So we'll see how it goes. And I've stepped up my thread. This is a 210 denier. I uh, probably don't need this thick of a thread, but we're tying in a foam. So anytime you're tying in a foam, whether it's a big hopper pattern or something like this, I will step up my thread at least a size, maybe two, because it really helps you bind in the foam and, you know, it'll keep from cutting it. So go ahead and put your thread back to the, you know, about where the barb would be. First thing we're going to catch in is our tail. Now it's a two-tone bucktail. So the first one is going to be white and it's not a huge clump. That's a pretty good size clump right there. Put in your stacker if you want. I'm just going to pull out the really long wonky fibers and then I'll grab it by the tips and then pull out some of the, the shorter ones. So I'm thinning it pretty good. So that's about how much I want right there. And it is a big long tail. So I'd say it's, you know, one, at least one and a half times the length of the body. So let's catch this in right here with a couple of wraps. So I guess there might actually be three components to this tail. So we got that coming down. I think that's going to look fine. Let's go ahead and secure this right here before we snip this off. So the third component, I guess, would be some flash. So we're going to put the white bucktail down. And all of them I've seen, whether they're purple, black, or green, they start with the white bucktail. And then they go with a little bit of flash and then colored bucktail on the top. So since I'm gonna do a red, I'm gonna put a couple of strands of this red crystal flash in it. And I think I'm gonna do four strands. Um, four might be a little much, but this is uh, pretty thin stuff. So what I'll do, that's just one strand. I've folded it over on itself twice. So I've got four strands right there and we'll trim it in a second. So let's just go ahead and lock this in right there on top. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and snip this excess off. 
and now we'll put some red bucktail in. Well, actually, let's go ahead and, and trim this to size before we do the red. So just maybe almost as long as the white, about right there is fine. I think it's off the edge of the camera, you can't tell, but it's about as long as the white. So now I'm gonna take a clump of the red, and I might do just a little bit more of the red than I did the white, but or maybe about the same, we'll see. I'm gonna pull out some of the long fibers here. Just try to even it up, grab it by the tips, and then pull out some of the shorter. And then tie it in the same length. Let's go about right there. Okay, I think that's gonna look good. And I should take my thread back to where I'm gonna catch it in first. Now if you find your thread doing that, spreading out on you, give it a clockwise spin. Maybe back it up, and now we're corded back up again. Okay, so let's get this caught in right here. You don't want it to flare, really, but a little bit of flare is not going to hurt. Okay, so let's catch this in. And don't worry if you're getting a little bit bulky here, because we're putting a, a pretty buggy dubbing on it. So I think that's going to be fine right there. Let's take a couple extra wraps before we snip this one off. And now the cool part of what makes this the Stealth Bomber. This is pretty much the only unique part of the fly. It's some two millimeter foam, some closed cell foam. And this, uh, Mark sent these to me. He's got a cutter apparently, so he can just, you know, cut these out. And if you don't have a cutter, which a lot of you probably don't, just cut a long strip, a couple of inches, about a hook gap. And then when you get to this end, just cut a triangle, maybe sort of an hourglass. I wouldn't even necessarily worry about the rounded part yet. You can do that in the last step. So what we want to do, well, let's get our thread back here to where we're going to catch this in. And where the this foam starts flaring back out, you want that to be right behind the eye. So let's hold it down on the back and catch this in right here. Now I'm going to put a couple of tight wraps and this is where having a thicker thread is really going to help you because you can put some quite some pressure on it. So I'm going to go put under and two over and then I'm pulling it pretty tight right here. About as tight as I can get away with without breaking my thread. So I'm pulling that tight. Double check it, make sure I'm still coming off the, the top of the hook. And I think I am. Now we're going to put some dubbing on. So leave your thread right back here. And what kind of dubbing do we use? Some ice dub, some kind of sparkle dub. And that one you saw Mark Tide, he used a white one. And plenty of them I've seen have used white. But since this is a black fly, I'm going to put some, some black ice dub on this stuff right here. It's got a little bit of a purple sheen to it, but I don't know if you're going to see that. And you really don't see an awful lot of this body but it does sit down in the surface, in the surface film, so I think it should be visible to the fish. So use what you want, but you know something to match the body I think is gonna work pretty well. And you'll wanna dub it to about two thirds. So that's not enough, I need to go a little bit more than that. Okay, I think that's going to be fine right there. Now, next step, we're going to fold this over. Leave your thread, you know, we're a good one-third back of the eye. Now, fold this over. I'm going to kind of pinch it around and then put two wraps right here. Fairly tight, but not so tight that it starts to spin. So keep it from spinning. And then we'll throw a wrap under and then over and do the same thing again. Wedge it back in there. And now, put tight pressure on that. So it looks a little bit like a beetle. You've got that dubbing underneath and then a carapace over the top. And But that's exactly what we want. So get your thread right in front of that. We're gonna put a little bit more dubbing on, get us right up behind the eye. Okay, now when we've got that on, with the thread right behind the eye, fold this piece down one more time and we're gonna put another segment, which is kind of like a, a thorax, but I mean, this doesn't look like any bug at all, so I don't know that we would call this a thorax, but I'm gonna do the same thing. 
couple of tight wraps, maybe one under and then maybe another one over. So I've got the thread on there pretty tight. I'm going to take it back to that the back one wrap, cutting across the top of that to get it to this back segment right here. Now we fold this tail piece over. So here's where you have an option. Um, I've seen some that are tied about like that, and I've seen them where it's really flared out. And I kind of like it a big, big flared out butt end. So I'm going to do it like that right there. And the one Mark tied, he had a pretty big flare on it too, and I think it looked great. So let's hold that right here and just put a couple of wraps right here. You don't have to put too many yet because we're going to put some more when we tie in more crystal flash for the wing. And we're going to trim this off. So this excess piece right here, just reach in here and cut this fairly close. Maybe throw another wrap right down the middle of it just to lock that foam in. I think we're good now. Now we've got a little bit of a wing to put on. So I'm using the same crystal flash that I just used. And I've got this red theme going on here. So I've got two strands of it. And I'm going to fold it over on itself twice. So one time fold it over. Now I've got four strands. Fold it over one more time. And now I've got eight strands. So that's eight strands right there. And I'm just going to catch it in right here where my thread is. Don't worry if you have a little bit of excess right there. We're going to trim that. Just try to want to get it to come off the, the, the top and the center of that right there. So a few securing wraps. And let's get in here and snip this excess. Probably don't even need to do this, but why not? Okay. And now, well, let's, we can trim this crystal flash in a second. Now what we're going to do is fold this piece over right here. Now, if you fold it over and tie it in right there, you might not have a big head. So what you might want to do is just push it forward a little bit, kind of bend it down on the side right here, and then tie this around right there. A couple of fairly tight wraps. Now we've kind of got our head, got this flaring up a little bit. And, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, half hitch whip finish right here. We still got some legs to do, but I don't want that to come loose on me. So, all right. Still got my thread and my bobbin. And I'm gonna just pull this up. And this isn't real long, this wing up here, maybe a body length right there. Okay. So only one more component left. It's the silly legs. Um, a lot of them you'll see with the barred legs. Since this is a black version of this guy, I'm just gonna use straight up black legs right here. And I didn't feel like taking out a, a marker and trying to, um, you know, put the bars on it. it. Does look pretty cool, but that'd take a few minutes. So I've just got some black right here and I'm gonna do a little Fold it over, so this is two strands. I mean, one strand, but fold it over, so it's really two. And I'm gonna catch it in right here on the side closest to the camera first. Let's do two wraps right there. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on my side right here. We'll trim them to size in just a minute. There's one more little bit tricky component or tricky step after we do this. Okay. So there we go. Now you'll notice I have not trimmed the, the front and I did not do that on purpose because we're going to whip finish it right between these legs. And if you went ahead and cut those, they're likely to be flying all over the place. So the easiest way to whip finish this is just to not trim those yet. And I want to do it by hand just because my fingers are wider than my whip finish tool. So I'm going to do three turns, I think is probably going to work. So there's a hand whip finish right there. Get in here and pull this tight. Now, let's see. Need to snip this thread off. I've got a lot of it out. Then I'm going to bend it over. 
twist it toward me. Now, let's take care of these legs. So just snip these right here. They're still not the right size. They're big and long. I mean, you could probably fish it like this because bass will eat about anything, but I'm gonna go ahead and trim it. I'm gonna make the front legs just a little bit shorter than the back. Back, almost as long as the tail, and the front, you know, a good half inch right here. And there you go, a stealth bomber. Uh, you might want to put a drop of head cement on the threads just right up under there or a small drop of super glue to, to really secure it. But other than that, a pretty cool looking fly. Really effective, warm water, bass bug, panfish type popper. Makes all kinds of noise on the water. Uh, and I think it's a really cool looking pattern. So I appreciate you watching folks. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.